So what do you think um, the digestive system of a depressed person looks like? It doesn't look very good. What do you think happens if we give depressed people probiotics, probiotic supplements? Not even, you know, high quality food, the stuff that me and you hopefully eat. No, 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 just a supplement. They get happier. 10% of your cells belong to you. 90% of the other cells are bacteria. Don't believe me? It didn't come from me. It came from the author of this study. Almost sounds like pseudoscience, doesn't it? Here's another fact for you. For every one human gene that you have, you have 200 bacterial genes. So genetically speaking, if we say that the human genome and the bacterial genome are your genome, you're 99.5% bacteria. Do you understand that? You're 99.5% bacteria. Because remember, without the bacterial genes, you wouldn't work correctly. You wouldn't be able to survive. You need those genes. Well, wait, let me ask you a question. If we're 99.5% bacteria and only 0.5% human, genetically speaking, then doesn't it make sense to focus on the bacteria part if we want to become healthy? It definitely does. In modern society, we seem to have a fear of bacteria. When someone says that there are a lot of bacteria on your phone or on your toilet seat or on your doorknob, people have a negative association with that. Yet, there are a bunch of bacteria all over your body and without them, you would be very, very sick. When I was a kid, I thought bacteria were bad. When we used to make fun of girls, we used to say that they had the girl bacteria and so they should stay away from us. And again, when you're saying something bad to someone, you're trying to put them down socially in the social hierarchy. So again, we're using bacteria as something bad toward this other person because we think bacteria are bad. And again, we used to be told that if we don't sanitize our hands, if we don't wash our hands, we'll have bacteria on our hands, not pollution by the way, not the, you know, adhesives from the glue we used to use when we glued together things, not the plastic that we played with, not the formaldehyde from the color that we used to use. No, no, no. No chemicals are on your hands, no bacteria. You should wash your hands because if you eat food and there are bacteria on your hand, then you're going to get the bacteria inside of you and you're going to get sick. No, no, it's not the formaldehyde and the chemicals. No, no, it's the bacteria. And because society has this general view of bacteria, we have a positive association with the word antimicrobial. We like antibiotics. We like hand sanitizers. We like anything that kills bacteria. When a food says antimicrobial, we associate that with something positive, something that's healthy. Killing bacteria is a good thing, that you should kill the toxic bacteria that's inside of you. I want you to have a negative association with that word, not emotionally, but from a health standpoint. Anything that kills bacteria is not good. Anything that promotes bacteria is a good thing. And by the basis of the two facts I stated earlier, in the video, in the beginning of the video, you should understand why that is. But trust me, when I start talking about the health benefits of bacteria, you will 100% understand that if you want to become healthy, you need to promote the growth of the bacteria you already have, and you need to stop killing bacteria. But before we move on to the health benefits, there's something a little bit more important, which will clarify the entire relationship between a human being and bacteria. You see, bacteria are not different from you. Bacteria want to survive. Bacteria are an organism just like you that wants to survive, right? By being inside of us, we protect them and we give them an optimal environment to survive. What bacteria do for us is so complex that even modern science admits that they don't know. They don't know. They, they don't know the scope of the functions that bacteria perform in us. But by looking at the benefits of bacteria, I can tell you that I've concluded, after doing research for this video, that bacteria influence every single process in the body. Every single one. It makes it more efficient. It, without them, you would die far, far quicker. Everything would be far more inefficient. They do everything, okay? And if they don't do everything, you could say more accurately that they help with everything. Their existence is just like a big fat boost. But no, that analogy is still incorrect, because without bacteria you would die. You cannot be a human being without bacteria. You would have no body, there would be no human being, because there would be no body, there would only be death. It would be a black screen, okay? Without bacteria, you die. They're an essential part of you. They're just like your liver. Remove the liver and you die, remove the bacteria and you die. 
treat bacteria, and this is the best way to treat bacteria, treat the bacteria as an organ by itself. Without this organ, you die. Without a brain, you die. Without the skin, you die. Without your muscles, you die. Without your liver, you die. Without your pancreas, you die. Without your gallbladder, you sort of survive. Without your bacteria, you die. Bacteria are there in the first place for survival. What we see as miraculous, beautiful things that help us live a happy life, they see as survival. The reason they help in our digestion, the reason they digest stuff in general, is because they survive by doing that. Whatever they're doing in the body, that's good for them. They're very happy that they're inside our body and we're very happy that they're inside our body. So what do you think happens when you take antibiotics or you do anything that's very harmful for your bacteria? Well, you're taking 99.5% of the gene expression that's there. You're just cutting it off. Not all of it, of course, but eventually, when it reaches a certain point, you'll die. If you just continue taking antibiotics, you'll die. 100%. Uh, unless you're able to regenerate bacteria faster than you're able to kill them. But again, if you're killing them faster than they're able to regenerate, then you're going to die. 100%. Or you're going to be very sick and you won't be able to do anything. And then you'll die. Now imagine taking a liver biotic. For some reason, your liver's doing something bad and so you need to kill the liver cells. And so you're taking this liver biotic and, oh, let's say the problem went away, but you killed a lot of your liver cells. Now what do you think happens to you? Your liver is one of your most important organs. And because you know the functions, you're thinking in this analogy that, oh, something really bad is going to happen to me. But when you think about antibiotics, you're not thinking about it in the same way because you can't really visualize what the benefits of bacteria are. But if I tell you that bacteria are just as important as your liver, do you realize what you're doing when you're taking an antibiotic? It's the same as taking a liver biotic. That's how serious it is. Now, most of the bacteria in our body is in the digestive system, and most of the bacteria that is in our digestive system is in the large intestine. And we'll get into why bacteria is so concentrated in the large intestine, but let us just think about the words gut microbiome. The reason we say gut microbiome when we think about bacteria in general is because most of the bacteria in our bodies in the digestive system. So that's why gut microbiome gets thrown around much more than human microbiome. The problem with the common knowledge of most people is that if you say stomach, people say, oh, digestion. If you say gallbladder, people say, oh, bile, digestion of fat. And most people, many people don't actually know what bile does or what the gallbladder does. So that's for the more educated people. If you say small intestine, people say, ooh, um, uh, absorption. If you say large intestine, people say, ooh, poop. But if you were to go on the street and ask people what the gut microbiome does, you wouldn't get many answers. And even a nutritionist would give you a fairly bad answer, I would say. You'll never find human beings in a place where there is no food. That's because we need to obtain energy. Any organism needs to obtain energy. Bacteria are also organisms. They need to obtain energy, they need to eat. So what are they doing in our digestive system? Obviously, they're eating. That's what they're doing. Why would they want to do anything else? And now you might understand why they're so important for digestion, why they're so concentrated in your gut, and why you can't digest anything without them, why they're so integral for gut health. Because first, you've got chemical digestion, you've got gastric acid, you've got enzymes secreted by the liver, the pancreas, the mouth too to some degree, and from the intestinal lining. And then afterward, you don't have a lot of chemical digestion. You have bacterial digestion. You have bacteria eating up the food and shitting it out. And by doing that, they break it down. Yes, throughout the small intestine, you do have a bunch of enzymes lining the intestinal wall. That is true. But bacterial digestion is especially important in the large intestine because it's the only form of digestion that occurs in the large intestine. And this is why it takes food 9 hours to pass through the small intestine while it takes food 30 to 40 hours to pass through the large intestine because if the digestion is primarily bacterial, it will be slower. You'll need more time to extract the nutrients out of the food because bacteria work a bit more slowly than an enzyme would work. Your large intestine creates vitamins because of the bacteria. You create vitamin K2, you create vitamin B1, vitamin B2, and probably many other things, many other nutrients like your butyric acid. That's one of them. So 
The thing is, if for some reason your bacteria and your large intestine are messed up, you're getting far less nutrients. Imagine you've always got, well, let's say, three to four meals passing through in the large intestine, and your bacteria are constantly extracting nutrients from them. If for some reason your large intestinal bacterial environment is bad, you're getting far less nutrients than I am. My large intestine is pretty good, so whenever, you know, these meals are passing through, I'm getting a bunch of nutrients. Now comes the mind-blowing part of the video, because I'm going to talk about the benefits of probiotics. Now what are probiotics? Let me define the word for you so that there are no misconceptions. Probiotics are bacteria consumed through the mouth. That's what a probiotic is. Dietary bacteria. That is how I'd like to define it. You can take a probiotic supplement but that doesn't mean that yogurt isn't a probiotic. It is a probiotic food because you're getting a significant amount of bacteria through your mouth, through the dietary way. So a supplement and food can be a probiotic. Now, what is a prebiotic? I once got a comment asking, what do you do for prebiotics? I said, well, I don't do prebiotics. I do probiotics. I, I drink this and that. Then the person replied, yes, but I asked for prebiotics. You see, prebiotics is the inferior brother or sister of probiotics. With probiotics, you're getting bacteria straight away. With prebiotics, you're eating something that will give your intestines a chance to create more bacteria. This could be sugar, because when, when the bacteria feed on sugar, uh, you get more bacteria. You feed the bacteria, the bacteria grows. Soluble fiber is another big one. If you eat fruit, you not only get sugar, you get soluble fiber. The bacteria can eat on the soluble fiber and they can grow. Let's get something straight. The reason I say that probiotics are better than prebiotics and the reason why you don't even need prebiotics, essentially, is because with a probiotic, you're introducing new strains. You have the ability to introduce new strains. With a prebiotic, you're only working with what you currently have. You're growing what you currently have. The second reason is that for a prebiotic to work, you already need a good bacterial environment in your intestines. If you don't have a good bacterial environment, you might get more bacteria, but it's not enough. The most efficient way to create a good bacterial environment is to actually eat the bacteria itself, not to feed the bacteria. Yeah, both are good. But this one is far better for most people, because most people have a messed up uh, gut in general. You're not going to have enough bacteria, you're not going to have good strains. So you need the probiotic. Do you know what a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor is? Also called SSRI? It's a class of medications that jail serotonin, making it work more. Serotonin is essential for you being a happy human being. Depressed people have low levels of serotonin, you probably have high levels of serotonin if you're happy. As you may have guessed, SSRIs are antidepressants. Now did you know that 90% of the serotonin that's produced in your body is produced by bacteria in your digestive system? Yes, that's a true fact. It's a scientific fact. So what do you think um, the digestive system of a depressed person looks like? It doesn't look very good. What do you think happens if we give depressed people probiotics, probiotic supplements? Not even, you know, high quality food, the stuff that me and you hopefully eat. No, 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 just a supplement. They get happier. It literally cures depression. Bacteria cures depression. I don't care what anyone says. There's scientific evidence showing that bacteria will cure depression. And as I said earlier, you need gut bacteria to produce a bunch of extra nutrients. That not only are you getting it from the food, you're also creating it from the food. So if someone has a bad digestive environment and they suddenly take a probiotic, they're not just taking a probiotic, they're getting more vitamin K and B vitamins. They're getting more nutrients in general, just through taking a probiotic. You see, many people that I work with, they have digestive issues. Usually people come to me because they have digestive issues, and I usually talk a lot about digestive issues. So when I work with these people, I almost always recommend that they have a bacteria source in their diet, that if they're drinking raw milk, they ferment the raw milk, and they drink that, that they ferment it for like a week, something like that, so that the bacteria in the raw milk grows a lot so that whenever they drink it they get a lot of bacteria why is this because there's such a huge huge amount of studies showing that if you take a probiotic it improves almost every every single symptom digestive symptom that is that you might have indigestion improves it um, bloating improves it. Bacteria doesn't just make your digestive system more healthy. It doesn't just help with symptoms. It doesn't just make you produce more nutrients. 
it also increases the absorption of nutrients most likely because you're increasing your epithelial health and if you don't know about all of these terms if you don't know about the digestive system in general and how to heal it watch this video of course this video is pretty good but still you need to watch this video too listen closely there's a study showing that if you give hiv patients probiotics their immunity improves now of course the immune system model is not one that is completely correct when you you know you look at how the mainstream modern medical establishment describes it but that's a topic for another video there are numerous studies showing that bacteria are very very good for inflammatory conditions now here's the thing what is inflammation because i want you to understand this so that you don't think that oh we're reducing inflammation what we're reducing is cell damage okay and we're also speeding up healing Inflammation is the byproduct of cellular damage. It's not the cause of disease. It's not a bad thing in and of itself. It's a bodily process that is there to heal tissue. It came from cell damage. The problem is cell damage, anything that damages cells, not the inflammation itself. In this study, they show that consuming bacteria reduces arterial stiffness. And when I've looked at other studies, any metric that measures heart disease except ldl because ldl has nothing to do with heart disease every metric shows that bacteria is amazing for heart health if you have any heart problems eat a bunch of bacteria now lastly bacteria are scientifically proven to improve your mood they make you more happy they increase the quality of your life regardless of any circumstance if you think about it all the actions you perform eating, sleeping, talking to a certain person, calling a certain person, watching this video, is because you want happiness and you want to avoid pain. Anything that makes you avoid pain is good. Anything that makes you go toward happiness is good. And so if bacteria improve your happiness, if they make you achieve the thing that you want to achieve with every single action that you take every single day and for the rest of your life too, unless you break that cycle by becoming enlightened, then you should probably focus on getting bacteria into your diet. This is just a small list. I want you to realize that whatever health effect you're looking at, bacteria will provide that for you. Oh, you want more testosterone? Oh, you really got excited there. Eat bacteria. You want less cortisol? Eat bacteria. If you want less anxiety, eat bacteria. You want to be less depressed? Eat bacteria. You want better uh, physical performance? You know, you're an athlete? Eat bacteria. Bacteria give you any health effect you list because you are completely dependent on bacteria to function correctly and they influence almost all your bodily processes. They influence almost all organs. Now, if bacteria are so healthy, do we see healthy people out in nature consuming bacteria-rich foods? Yes, we do. Usually, these traditional foods are eaten less in modern society. But if you look at the traditional people that are still left, they still consume these things. So the Slavic people, they consume kefir, which is raw fermented milk. Raw milk that is fermented, so the bacteria increases. They hang up a sheepskin. They put the milk inside of a sheepskin. Then they put the kefir grains in it and they put it next to a door so that when someone needs to walk through the door, they knock the kefir so that it gets, you know, shaken thoroughly because that's a good thing according to them. In Germany, you've got sauerkraut, although sauerkraut originally comes from China. And in China, you've also got kombucha. In Korea, you've got kimchi. You've also got kvass. And speaking of beverages, all beer, all wine is probiotic. It's a fermented food. Nowadays, the beer and wine that you find in the supermarkets and the grocery stores and even the ones you buy from high-end places, they're pasteurized. So all the bacteria is killed. You want raw stuff and you don't want to drink a lot of it because of the ethanol but again if you're eating a very big hearty meal filled with protein and fat you can handle some ethanol the andean people have a beer that they make from their own spit it's corn beer they take corn they chew it mix it with their spit then they spit it out and then they ferment that they ferment corn with their own spit and then they drink the liquid that is the result of that. But to me, these are boring examples. I like what the Nordic people do and I like what the Inuit do. The Inuit have something called kiviak, where they take a bunch of birds, they put them in a seal skin, they bury that underground, and the birds are not cooked or anything, they're completely raw. They bury that underground, they let that ferment, 
underground for a few months, like a few months. Then they dig up the seal skin, they open it, and you've got this big mess of fermented bird corpses, and they eat that. It's raw fermented meat that they eat, and that's a probiotic. And again, they've been doing this for a very long time. And obviously, if someone got sick the first time they did this, they wouldn't continue doing it. Speaking of raw fermented meat, Swedish people have a thing called surströmming, where you take fish and you ferment it. It's raw fermented fish, that's what it is. And it's a very good probiotic source, although it smells really bad, and Kiviak probably also smells really bad. If you get used to it, if you've been eating these kinds of things, if you've been on a traditional diet and not a modern McDonald's diet, then these things will be more appealing because you are used to them. And the reason I say this is because your smell, your sense of smell, is affected by the bacteria in your digestive system in your body in general. This is something that I've noticed. This is not anecdotal evidence, but still, I think it's important to mention. If you've eaten a bunch of a fermented food that stinks, and you've got the same bacteria in your body as what you'd find in this fermented food, then you won't find the smell as bad as someone who hasn't got the same bacteria in their body. As an example, if my family smells my raw fermented milk, they don't think it smells that great. Sometimes they think it smells disgusting, while me, I think it smells great. And the taste and the smell of it has evolved over time because my bacterial profile has changed because I've consumed so much of it. The reason I bring up the fermented foods of different cultures is for you to understand that they're important, that they are a part of the human diet, that humans seek after and create these probiotic foods for many reasons. You have to realize that you don't have the same food access as all of these people. You don't have the same food access as the Andeans, you don't have the same food access as the Chinese, you don't have the same food access as the Inuit. You have the food that you have access to. Because I have access to raw milk, I ferment it. I create a probiotic from the raw milk because that is what I have access to. If you only have access to lettuce, um, out of the things that you can ferment, then make sauerkraut. You see how that works? So what I'm advocating for is to look at your food access and create a fermented food so that you get a bunch of bacteria into your diet. For most people in modern society, you don't need sauerkraut, more specifically, because it won't contain any nutrients. It will mainly contain bacteria and maybe some vitamin C. You need a bunch of nutrients. You need a nutrient-dense food. So that's why for most people, I recommend raw fermented milk, raw kefir. And again, raw kefir and raw fermented milk and raw clabber, they're all the same to me. It's just that some people like to call kefir kefir because people use kefir grains to make it. You don't necessarily need to use kefir grains to make kefir. Kefir is a name for raw fermented milk. If you want to learn more about my main probiotic source on raw fermented milk, then watch this video. So another thing I want you to realize is that these cultures that I talked about earlier, they're not just including a probiotic source. They have a diet that is very rich in bacteria because they're constantly consuming these probiotic foods as a very big staple of their diet. Like the Slavic people who consume kefir, they consume a lot of kefir. It's a big part of their diet. They get a lot of calories from that. And so what I'm advocating for and what I've experimented with and seen great results with, and again, this is something you can try, is to not just include a probiotic source. I want you to make bacteria a big part of your diet. I want you to eat a bacteria-rich diet. Think about it. Bacteria are these little workers that perform a bunch of functions in your body. The more workers you've got, the more efficient your body is. Imagine, they're so important that 99.5% of your genetic makeup is made up of bacterial genes, not human genes. So, if you sit there and you drastically increase their amount in your body, what do you think is going to happen? you're going to get more energy, you're going to become more attractive, you're going to get better skin, better brain function, better digestion, better liver health, better kidney health, better uh, pancreas health, better intestinal health, whatever it might be, everything. Every single factor is going to become better because you're so incredibly dependent on bacteria to function. Now, there's yet another strategy for increasing the bacteria in your diet that I haven't talked about, and it is adopting a raw foods diet. 
Now let me explain it this way, because the amount of bacteria in raw meat isn't that significant as opposed to cooked meat. Cooked meat contains zero bacteria, but raw meat doesn't contain a lot of bacteria unless you ferment it. If you eat a McDonald's cheeseburger, which is obviously unhealthy, for one day, and then you don't eat it again, overall you'd say that the amount of damage that the cheeseburger caused wasn't that big, so it's alright to eat one cheeseburger. But then when you tell a person that, okay, what if you eat a cheeseburger every day? Well, that damage accumulates. And so then you start thinking about the effect as something significant, right? Well, I would say that when it comes to dietary bacteria intake, it's the same with a raw foods diet. Yes, the bacterial amount in fresh raw food isn't that high. In fermented foods, it's much, much higher because bacterial growth is exponential, right? So think about it like this. If over the course of a year, you only ate raw food, even if it's not fermented, just raw food, how much bacteria did you ingest in comparison to if you were to eat just cooked food? You ingested a lot of bacteria. That's like several days worth of fermented foods, right? So this is a way of drastically increasing the amount of bacteria that you consume over time. And if you're afraid of bacteria, again, watch this video. But the thing is, the bacterial strains that we talk about as dangerous in raw animal foods, they're also contained in plants. You'll find them in spinach, in raw vegetables, you'll find them in fruits. So, again, it would be hypocritical to say that raw meat is dangerous without saying that raw fruits and vegetables are dangerous. Of course, the biggest proof of raw animal products not being dangerous is Kivyak. The mere existence of Kivyak it is raw fermented bird corpses, rotten bird corpses that are eaten without any problems whatsoever. So whatever parasites and bacteria are in there, no effect on humans. Only beneficial effects, as we discussed in the benefits of probiotics section of this video. Why is mercury unhealthy? Because it kills cells. Why is meat healthy? Because it sustains the cells you already have and you're able to build cells from it. So of course it's healthy. You can replace cells with bacteria and you would still be correct. And this is the bacteria principle. Anything that's unhealthy will make it so that bacteria have a bad environment to be in in your body. They won't flourish. You have a bad environment so they can't really grow in it. Anything that's healthy will promote bacteria. It will promote bacterial growth or in some cases like fermented foods and nutrition in general, it will add bacteria into your body, okay? So the bacteria principle is that not only do cells get affected by the things that are unhealthy and healthy, bacteria are affected in the same way. And you should focus on both equally because bacteria are just as important as your cells. By the way, on my website, I have a completely free PDF called the 10 Dietary Rules. It gives you the 10 dietary rules that make nutrition easy. It's not cookie cutter stuff. It's the principles that any human being should follow nutrition wise. I also have a book called the six health commandments. It gives you the truth about what health is. And so if you apply that to your current situation, whether you have IBS or IBD or acne or whatever it might be, you'll understand what the problem is, trust me. And if you want personal help from me, if you want to talk to me, go to my consultations page in the description. With that said, go and eat a lot of bacteria. I know you can do it.